Welcome to Event Radio, covering local drag racing, stock car racing, motorcycles, go-karts. If it's got wheels and you can race it, you'll hear about it here. Event Radio is Motorsports Radio on steroids. Now, let's join your hosts, Spivy Williams and Terrible Tea Guy. All right, guys, welcome to the next edition of Event Radio. This is going to be a cool show, guys. And trust me, if you have any young guys in your, your clan that ride four-wheelers, you'll want to go get them, drag them over to the, to the radio, and let them listen to this show. It is our honor and our pleasure to bring the two gentlemen to you that, uh, number one, that I got to enjoy having dinner with, and we got to know each other and got to talk some old race lies and all kinds of cool stuff and had a little bit of fun. But I got to meet these guys, and I had met one, and I got to meet the other one. Uh, between them, there are enough GNCC national championships to fill any kind of a Hall of Fame you want to go to. Uh, I have the two guys that are the bad guys on the block. They are the best in the world, and they are here with us on Event Radio today. And we're going to talk to them. We're going to find out the good, the bad, and the ugly about what it's like to race ATVs and then what it's like to be the best in the world at it. So it's, this is going to be a fun show. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, the, the two gentlemen, like I say, that uh, uh, I'm going to introduce you to, one, Mr. Bill Balance that has nine GNCC World Championships to his credit. The other gentleman, the, the the guy I just got to meet, and he is the young gun of the sport. He's the one that's following in Bill's footsteps and, and sort of maybe moving him out of the way. I don't know, but that may happen. We're not really sure. But but he is Mr. Walker Fowler. And, and guys, trust me, uh, watch your GNCC races and, and watch what's going on. You will know a lot about this man. Get on YouTube, uh, check him out on, on Google or whatever, and, and you will be impressed, I promise you. But we're going to take a real quick break on, on Event Radio. We thank you for joining us and listening to our shows. But we're going to take a real quick break and, and let our sponsors pay a little bit of this tab. And I'm going to bring both these guys in here wide open and introduce you to the best there is. You're on Event Radio. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. Quick Fuel Technology, the innovators in fuel systems, introduces the latest in high-temperature coating technology for select street and performance carburetors. QFT's new Black Diamond Series features a unique satin black Teflon coating that provides award-winning good looks and lasting durability. The Black Diamond Series is impact-resistant, repels all underhood chemicals, and reduces fuel temperature by 6% for improved performance. The Black Diamond Series by Quick Fuel, the ultimate in form and function. On the track or on the street, the number one brand in performance is Hawley. Have you heard about the Ultra Street Avengers, Ultra Double Pumpers, Ultra HP, and Ultra Dominator carburetors? They're ultra light, ultra cool, and ultra fast. Hawley carbs are the most powerful carbs money can buy with no further modifications. Hawley, winning performance for over 100 years. All right, guys, you're back on Event Radio. Guys, what's happening? Boy, dinner was good, man. Dinner was great. What about it? I was a pretty big fan. <laughs> <laughs> you were? Yeah. Did you, you you quit after you got to the bottom of the plate? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. The, when uh, the plate showed? Yeah, when the plate showed, there wasn't anything. Uh, there was no, no more caloric intake there. <laughs> oh, okay. Boy, that's that's technical. Man, that would get technical on me. The, 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 I guess that it, that's a northern thing. See, now you're in the south, buddy. You, you're you're where there's sweet tea and country ham, and and you're from Ohio, and we gotta indoctrinate you. We gotta we gotta make you an honorary Southerner. That's that's one thing Bill's gonna have to teach you. Yeah, it was kind of tough going down there tonight. I mean, I had one of the best steaks that I've had. I've had some, but I had uh, one of the best steaks I had in a long time down there tonight. And then Mark 
Taylor's buddy here that's um, the mechanic. The mechanic that's got to fix everything. Sitting beside me, orders a big, nice fillet and gets it charbroiled, well done. I mean, just completely runs it. Yeah, so probably the cow probably cried all the way to the plate. We're gonna have to coach them a little bit and teach them how to eat. A well, little. you're gonna are you gonna take them out for country ham? You got to get them. You got to know what country ham is, Bill. Yeah, that's we'll, important. We haven't done that yet, so I'll have well, to. Maybe I'll talk to mom and get her to fix that up for us one time. Well, yeah, they got to have country ham and red eye gravy and all the stuff so they know what southern stuff is all about see that's the one speed secret you haven't showed them yet see <laughs> that's what that is and you know what that is buddy country ham see the difference in country ham and city ham city ham is, is cured with sugar but country ham is, is cured with salt so you got to go fast because you're dying of thirst and you got to get to water somewhere <laughs> see that's the way that works right yeah you could be right about that Walker, my friend, you are a very personable young man to be as young as you are. Uh, your reputation precedes you. You are a talented gentleman. You have one world championship to your credit. You're knocking on the door of number two. Uh, talk to me. What? Why, how in the world do you do that? Which, which part? <laughs> <laughs> well, number one, talk up closer to the microphone. It, you pretend like you like it, even if you don't. But, but no – you started with with a with a bike at a young age, then you moved into the four wheelers. That's got to be a rough transition. Yeah, you know, um, I actually did. I started on ATVs, but there wasn't really uh, national caliper racing for them at the time. So I, I focused my efforts on the uh, on the motorcycle, and I got as far as I could. Uh, we started in two thousand two in the sixty five cc class, and uh, you know, kind of got my bike legs under me and. I enjoyed it. I really did. I just uh, I got to a point where I felt like I plateaued, and I just couldn't go any faster. I was trying and, and training and, you know, doing everything I could to get better at it. But the uh, the four-wheeler, uh, I always had, you know, always had one. And, um, you know, Dad actually wouldn't let me ride it because it was c- too expensive, and there was always upkeep on it. But I really enjoyed it. It just came natural to me, and I just, um, you know, I just loved it. And, uh, you know, it's not that I fell out of love with the motorcycle, but I just really love the sport of ATV racing and, and watching guys like Bill Balance and Barry Hawk and uh, videos from the good old days of Chuck DeLulo, Bob Sloan. Um, and, you know, I just I wanted to be that. That's what I wanted to be. So um, in 2010, I actually got uh, got a Yamaha ride and went under uh, Bill's wing and, you know, just learned the ropes of ATV racing. And, you know, now in 2015, I, you know, got my first championship and, We've had two races this year in 2016, and and uh, won both of them so far. So, gonna see how long I can run with it. But uh, I got a long way to go before I get to nine. Well, that's all right. But you you know you got to start. You yeah. got to start. It would, yeah. See, it's a way. It's a way. What happens is you win these trophies, see, and you put them up on the mantle. <laughs> well, one doesn't look good alone. So you got to put two up there. And then you got to balance it out. So you got to add that third one. <laughs> and then so it'll really balance. You got to put two on each end. And then you got to have some in the middle. Yep. <laughs> so that's what that's the way this works. Bill, let me ask you something, buddy. How old are you? I'm thirty nine. Thirty nine. How does it feel to be called one of the old guys? Uh, <laughs> what about, you're thirty nine years old, prime of your life, and he's calling you one of the old guys. What about well, that? It's okay. I mean, I had I had my time in the sport, and uh, I enjoyed it. There's not going to ever be a day that I don't miss it. Um, once you've been in that. That lifestyle and that arena and, uh, you know, being on top of something. You know, when I was a kid, I, it, it was a dream for me, you know, just like anybody else that whatever sport that they're crazy about, it was a dream for me to uh, become a pro and then to be one of the top pros and then to win a championship. But but uh, the sport was good to me, and I thoroughly, thoroughly loved it and put my heart and soul into it. And I had my time, and, you know, my body, it gets older, and with all the injuries and stuff that I've had, uh, you know, my body's not what it used to be. But inside my mind and, and all that, you know, there's still lots of times where I wish I was out there. But You're still 16 in your mind, yeah, right, or my, 18 or whatever. Yeah, in my mind I am, yeah. But, uh, but uh, it, was good. it was a good way to step out the sport the way I did. I think not playing fair. Just uh, let's hold it down here just for kicks. If it doesn't work, we'll get another one. And uh, when when I was starting, when I knew that the time was coming where I was going to have to step out of the sport, and uh, that's when 
Um, I started doing some management and uh, hired with Taylor and, and Walker. And uh, at the time, Walker was in the Pro-Am class just under Pro, and Taylor was a pro rider. But, uh, you know, going to the races and, and being there all the time, as Walker was young and a kid, he, he was coming up through the junior classes, and, and it was just everywhere he went, you know, he was winning, he was winning, he was winning. And you didn't have to go and watch on the sidelines very long to – to tell that he had what it took, and uh, All right, let me ask you something: Do you do you sit and watch him now, and you know what he's going to experience next, right? I mean, you watch him; you got to see yourself there. You got to because he's doing too good, too quick, and and you've got to see a younger version of of Bill Balance there uh, through Walker because you you know he's got the stuff. You know he's. He's going to be on that podium as many times, if maybe not even more than you did in his career, and and you gotta you gotta be a pretty proud teacher, you know. Well, well it didn't all come from me. He well, had, yeah, but he, a lot of it did. He now. had a whole lot of natural talent. Uh, well, it takes it, that too. The one the one thing that was stood out with me with Walker above anything else, everybody in all the champions in different sports and different things that they do, you know. Everybody's got their own knack about things, and there was a difference between Barry Hawk and myself, and there's a difference between uh, myself and, and Walker. But there's one thing that I noticed from Walker from the get-go um, was his drive to win on the track and that that uh, just that, that, that thing that few people have. He's got the want-tos. To lose was the, want the worst to. thing in yeah. the world. Yeah, we talked about that at dinner, Walker. You – you are a very dedicated young man. You, uh, I believe you told me you ride at least, if you can, every day. Is that correct? Uh, you know, I try to. Whenever the body says it needs a break, we take a break. But uh, definitely try to, you know, minimum if there's five weekdays, try to get, uh, you know, four good days of riding in and then at least a race on the weekend. Usually get to try and stay sharp. Well, that's that's cool. That's pretty much every day, buddy. I mean, the races are, what, two hours in length? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Sir, now I don't owe you any money, so don't be watching that. Uh, that's what you know. Call me, sir, is like an elevator in an outhouse. It just doesn't fit. But but the 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 races are two hours in length, and we talked earlier. Uh, there's three to four hundred bikes in a race. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, our afternoon race is a little smaller. It's uh, it's the, the professionals, the semi professionals, and then your top amateur racers. Uh, the morning class has a real big turnout. And, uh, you know, there's even 100 youth racers on the track before. So the day, the, you know, the day kicks off at 8 a.m. with 100 youth riders out there, some of the best in the world. And they get the track groomed up nice. And, and the, uh, the 10 a.m. class goes out there. That's where our, uh, our women pros are. And uh, the 4x4 professional guys on 800-pound machines with mm -hmm. 90 horsepower. And those things, I tell you what, they can dig some holes and make a track rough. And uh, also the lower-tier amateur riders, like I said, there's three or 400 bikes out there. And then when we get to get on the track at 1 p.m., it's a wreck. And then uh, – Well, but, it, but but that's what we talked about. You, in your two-hour session, you're never going to go through the same section. Even though it's it's the same section, it's not the same. No matter. Uh, can't be with that many bikes. Uh, no. And that's uh, the weather. Uh, I mean, literally just temperatures. Um, and like you said, just the, the amount of machines. It, it all changes the track, you know, dramatically. And, yeah, it, it keeps you on your toes for sure. Um well, I, I don't mind telling you, buddy, I, and where I wouldn't be a total idiot, you know, I did watch a little bit of the stuff on you on YouTube, guys, and I'm, I'm telling you, if you want to go over there, look up this gentleman on YouTube and watch some of the videos there, I wouldn't get out of the electric chair to ride with him a lap. You know, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. I mean, it's just, buddy, you are quick now. There's no doubt about it. I, uh, I guess if I robbed a bank, I'd want you to drive the getaway car. <laughs> but but it's, it, it's unbelievable some of the things I see you doing, and then I've watched some on Bill. And it's just sort of deja vu all over again because you guys are so far ahead of of whatever's in second place. I mean, it's it's not no comparison. Uh, you know, there's always going to be. Um, I would say every race there's at least two guys usually that break away. Sometimes a third. Um, earlier in the race, you know, everyone is kind of close, and then I'd say as the race wears on, getting closer to the midway point and hour mark, uh, you know, there usually is a breakaway group, and then typically. By the end of the race, there's only two guys, and uh, if I have my way, I try to just get away and do my own thing. I like to, I like to get out, 
Uh, I don't, you know, want a second place rider to see my lines and and see the way I'm riding that day. You know, if I got out front early and, and I'm struggling a little bit, if I'm far enough ahead, you know, no one can see that and feed off of it. And um, you know, I think Bill used to kind of hang back and 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 have enough confidence where he would just. Mm-hmm. He would almost thrive on that, like, yeah, follow me all day, and I'm going to show you. He's going to show you how to wear you out, right? I'm gonna, I'll <laughs> wear you it? out. Yeah. I'll, I'll get the job done at the end of the day. I like to sprint and try to get away. And just, you want to you want to be out there all by I yourself, just showing go the, do my own thing. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. Uh, physical conditioning. Do you work out a lot besides besides the riding? Uh, yeah, whenever I can, for sure. Um, I would say for me that that, that riding is is the is physically the best thing uh, for us in this sport. Um, I do try to, you know, cycle a little bit, mountain bike, road bike. Uh, I, I do running. It's it's free and my legs work, so <laughs> you might as well just put some jogging shoes on and go get the job done. Uh, if we're in the gym, I just do some real light weight training. I don't want to get hurt. You know, I don't need to bench press 400 pounds. There's no reason for it. Um, well, you're. It, this is a job to you, my friend. This is not. This is not se- Sunday fun day. Yeah. This is yeah. you. You you're working for Yamaha. You got to make them look good. You got to make their product look good, which you do. And so this is a job. You can't. Uh, you don't have the luxury of doing the other. No. Yeah. And like I said, I got a. The hardest part I think about the sport is you have to stay healthy. So everything you do, you only ever push a hundred percent. I'd say thirteen times a year at a GNCC race. I even go to local. <clears throat> excuse me, local races, and and back it down a little bit just because I know that uh, you know at the end of the day I'm only getting. My job and what I'm getting paid for is 13 times a year for the GNCC series, and I got to be 100 percent for those races. So. Oh yeah, that, that's what they're paying for, and exactly. you got to give them their money's worth. Exactly, and you do, or you wouldn't be in a position you're in. <laughs> Same way with this one over here. He he did that. Did you did you work at you? Of course, you got a 14 billion acre farm here that you got to work on. You don't need a gym, my friend, to stay with you from early until dark 30. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you get all the physical exercise you need. It's it's changed some farm life with the technology we have now. It has changed some, but when I was growing up and when I was Walker's age, uh, there was a lot of physical work on the farm. There still is, but there was a lot more back then. Um, I did a little bit of weight training and stuff like that when I was in high school, but once I've got to the professional level of racing, uh, there was no replacement for me except on the bike ride. And that's where you get the full body workout. And you get oh, work yeah. you get worked out in the ways that you need to because that's what you're going to be doing when you go to the racetrack. So you know, uh, I think a lot most of the people that have been really really successful, uh, they do a little side training here and there when they when they can or when it's bad weather or whatever. But uh, anybody that does it and's been really successful about it will tell you that time in the seat is is what it takes all right i got i got a question for both of y'all are both of y'all good pool players i am not good at pool really that's amazing bill uh i wouldn't say that i was good because i don't do it enough but there's been times and, and, and there's a method to my madness here guys i know that that in order to be a successful racer especially for you guys geometry comes into this a play a lot you got to know where to put that thing in the corner and know where it's coming out and a lot of a lot of round track guys We'll play pool to learn those angles, and and that's why I said the pool. But but there there's a lot of of I know that uh, uh, reading your deal on on you you're you're way pro young people to stay in school and 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 learn uh, Walker. And I think I I, I commend I commend you that big time, my friend. To be a good racer, you've got to use the things that you learned in school. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I personally think that, you know, schoolwork is very important. You know, there's a lot of people um, that, that say, you know, your middle school and your high school isn't about really being smart. It's just about getting the work done. And I don't think I'm the smartest guy either, but I had good grades. And, and you know what, at the end of the day, if you are dedicated to put the work in in school, there's a good chance that you're going to be able to apply yourself in just about anything else you do. So that's why I think, you know, if, if you're not willing to put in – the work for you know the first what is it 16 years or however many it's 12 grades plus so your preschools kindergarten so on so unless forth. you went like i did and i went to four or five different schools you know <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah i mean you have to start young <coughs> to be able to put in the work and and to know you, know you have to have some dedication for things you know i i was not allowed to race 
unless my grades were good. And you know, well, there's much, nothing wrong with that, Fred. Yeah, and that's how it should be. You know, my parents really pushed me to, you know, hey, you need to get A's. You need to apply yourself because, in the end of the day, it's it's going to do wonders for you. And I, you know, I really do, you know, I thank them for for teaching me just that life lesson, basically, because it has it has carried over. You know, same thing. If I don't like where I'm at for racing. I, I dig down and I, I, I see where I'm struggling. You know, like if I was struggling in science, I went home and I studied, you know, whatever subject we were on and, you know, I got better at it. So I do the same thing. If I'm struggling with a with a corner or, or a, you know, a section on my track at home, you know, what part of the machine or is it me? And then dig down and, and get the job done. Find there the you weakness. go. It's, it's a whole lot on and off the track, too. On, on the track, you know, that's one thing special about GNCC racing. It, you're going to so many different places in in the United States, and the terrain changes. You go to some places, and it's steep mountains, lots of hill climbs, lots of creek crossings. You go to Florida, and then it's almost like the plains, and it's sand whoops. And you're in New York, and it's something different. And you're in Indiana, and you're in Tennessee, and it's just constantly changing. And you're you're racing on the natural terrain that's there. So there's a whole lot, and you're out there for two hours at a time. So there's a lot of thinking involved. And then off the track, for instance, just exactly what we were out here doing today. We've been out here testing for the last couple of days, <coughs> working on suspension. And it's uh, lots of geometry, lots of math in the spring rates that we're using and calculating. And, and how See, a, lot of people, a lot of people don't even consider that, guys. Yeah. And, and there is so much more than getting on there and turning it wide open and hanging on. A lot more to it you know, than that. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, we're going to take a real, real quick break for our sponsors, guys. And we're going to get right back here. Uh, this is some really good stuff, some interesting stuff, uh, especially when you've got the two best in the free world that you're getting to talk to, Mr. Bill Balance and Mr. Walker Fowler. We'll be right back, guys. Quick Fuel Technology, the innovators in fuel systems, introduces the latest in high-temperature coating technology for select street and performance carburetors, UFT's new Black Diamond Series. Black features a unique satin black Teflon coating that provides award-winning good looks and lasting durability. The Black Diamond Series is impact resistant, repels all underhood chemicals, and reduces fuel temperature by 6% for improved performance. The Black Diamond Series by Quick Fuel, the ultimate in form and function. All right, guys, we are back with uh, our, our, our two guys that, that started out to be guys, and now they're buddies. Uh, we, we've learned a bunch so far about the ATV racing, you, you, if, if you have kids and, and they ride ATVs, number one, like both of these guys, and they will preach safety equipment to you until you're blue in the face because there are a lot of kids that do get hurt on the ATVs and you got to watch these guys. They don't get on them without the right stuff. They don't ride them without the right equipment, even out here testing. Am I, am I pretty close there guys? hundred percent dead on yeah that's through my career i had some bad injuries i've broke my neck i've broke my back i've broke ribs and punctured lungs and broke all kinds of bones i mean that's why i've got 74 screws in my body and two rods and a bird cage around my spine and plates and my legs and stuff like that well, but, but they love you at airports oh yeah <laughs> but they. uh yeah, safety is a big thing it, through through my career of racing my equipment's that I know of, uh, from licks where my head hit the ground from, you know, thankful that the helmet was there, but there's three or four occasions that I had through my career that without the equipment on, I wouldn't be here today. You, you had a pretty good t little, little tussle too, didn't you, my friend? Yeah. Yeah. I had, uh, one little head injury in, uh, 2010 that, that definitely kind of make me reevaluate my life. <laughs> okay. That's all right. But, uh, yeah, I had a real good crash. Um, and yeah, you saw stars for a while and a couple moments of uh, unconsciousness, and I don't really remember a couple hours of my life there. And it was scary, but um, you know, like Bill said, you know, <coughs> thank goodness for uh, you know good helmet technology and you know all the right chest protectors and knee pads and everything else. Other than my head, it was uh, you know everything else was in good shape. And uh, pretty much after that incident, I had a, a dented vertebrae in my neck, and um, I now use a neck brace. The technology. Uh, around 2009-10 just started becoming available so I started utilizing that and um, you know in in some of my other crashes get up sore but you know a lot fewer concussions since then and you know just no other injuries to speak of really so 
I guess I'm fortunate I'm going to knock on wood this table here. And Yeah, well, that's all right, but <laughs> Hey, whatever works. I mean, you know, if you – if we need a little widget to carry around or, or whatever it takes to make the good luck happen. Yeah, but yeah for sure. I get tickled about my, my partner, and, and I have to apologize for T that not being here. He's uh, – if you've ever come to visit Kentucky, guys, and, and even if I sound a little funny to you, it's allergy season here. And and we – if you want to visit Kentucky, please come this time of year because we'll give you something to take home with you as a souvenir. <laughs> but but Terry always says that uh, in his motorcycle career, his latest his latest words are – that he has crashed more than than Hillary Clinton's email server, so <laughs> you know he he has broke everything but your heart. But but T Bone, we're we're sorry that you didn't join us because these guys wanted to meet you. Uh, they hadn't had a chance to go to the zoo, and they thought that would be really cool. <laughs> uh, the has it ever scared you? It, it, yes, occasionally. Um, we 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 go really fast. We're and and it. it I like to think that the trees sometimes jump out in front of us because we're pretty good about missing them. And you're convinced when you come around a turn for the third or fourth time or hundredth or thousandth time on a practice track that that tree that you're coming towards was not there. I, uh, think, I think they unroot and they walk around <laughs> just like they do in the movies. The but, tree gremlins, that's yeah. what it is, yeah. yeah. So there's times where you definitely have to have some close calls you know and i think it's good honestly um it makes you realize like okay maybe i've been pushing the envelope a little far i'm gonna back it down or maybe there is a problem do you, with the do you know if you're riding over your head yes um i think any any rider that that knows you find your limitation and you have to ride within it because if not you you're just reckless is that, that's where you get hurt right that's when you wreck you think so Bill? And others. yeah for sure yeah you over the time you you learn where you can push it to, just like Walker said, and and uh, you know through the practice and bike setup and all those things, you're you're constantly after pushing it a little further and still being safe uh, and not going over your limits and not getting reckless. And that's part of better equipment and constantly learning and training and improving yourself and all those things. But uh, yeah, there was definitely some times on the out there through my career that got a scare or two for sure but uh it's that it's that burning desire same thing that i seen in in walker from the get-go it's that that desire that love of for what you're doing and uh the desire to win is what keeps you out there and keeps you doing it the old the old thing the thrill of victory the agony of defeat right that is it yeah walker let me ask you something buddy you you you've won two already this year how, and you, how many more you have you have to run 13 right so you've got eleven more you need to win because you need to have you need to have a full uh, uh, sweeping season here. It would be cool. Uh, <laughs> Why I, not? Yeah, it's never been done uh, in the pro ranks on motorcycles or four wheelers. Well, the see, GCC there's your one. challenge. We'll get you you one right now. I am the uh, the only semi pro to have a perfect season, um, and I did it while I was uh, under Bill's team with uh, my old mechanic Brock Booth. If he gets to listen, thank you, sir. Um, it takes it takes the rider, the machine, the mechanic, the family, perfect bill of health. It takes a lot of factors, and um, I, I accomplished it in 2011. And I even uh, I had a perfect season. I, ha- I had two overall wins where I actually beat everyone in the pro class as well. Oh, yeah. So it was a really good season, and to be able to do it again in the pro class, knowing all the factors that it took the first time, it would be really cool. But it's almost impossible. Well, no, impossible mm-hmm. takes one day longer. <laughs> That's what it is. It just takes yeah. one day longer. Now I got to know something. We we've got the ace mechanic here, but but how good of a seat of the pants feel do you have for the bike? Can as far as coming in and saying, hey, it would be better if this. I'm working on that. That 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 is. That's my a sh- great tool for him <laughs> to have, my friend. Other than yeah. the jockey, don't walk the horse, make it go. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you've got to. It, it, the more you can help him with seat of the pants feel. And I, and I think that comes into mechanical ability, too. Do you work on it, too? A little bit. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm getting a lot better, um, you know, being out of school and being able to focus my efforts on, on racing full-time for the last five years. I have no excuses, basically, anymore now. Before it was, oh, you know, I need to go do my homework and I need to go do this and that. Well, now it's, it's my job and it's my life. And it definitely, if you have some mechanical ability and you understand pivot points geometry and you know – the way your motor's feeling, you know, if you're rich or lean on the bottom, mid, top, all that stuff. Um, I'm getting better, and, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have the people around me that know more about it. 
And That's sort of why you're here, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, Bill is really good at it, and uh, our, our engine guy, uh, Toby Reed at Motor Experts, is really good with the motor package. And same thing. It's it, My dad always told me, if, if you're not the best at something, hire the person that is. And I'd like to think that my program is uh, the best of the best, and the friendships and, and people that I've met throughout the years they're all vital tools in my program. Uh, Walker Fowler doesn't win races. Um, you know, the team wins the team races. Wins buddy. races. So, I'm fortunate yeah. enough. My mechanic Mark Notman is uh, has been with me for is this year four now, buddy. This is our fourth year together, and uh, <coughs> uh, he he was a pro racer himself, and I think that was a really really good move for me to know that th- the guy wrenching for me was also a professional racer, and he knows himself um he can sit there and watch the bike and i'm like hey man i think it's doing this as it look like that and he can say i'm crazy or yes that's what it looks like and we can make an adjustment and he can even gear up and go ride it so that's been a, a really really positive well, that's good team. that's good that's great because we i'm depending on you to win this next 11 in a row see because that <laughs> you you know you got to make the old fat guy look good here yeah, for yeah. having you on the radio <laughs> so you gotta you gotta have the clean sweep for all the deal is it true you're only as good as you were your last race I'd like to think so, so right now I'm on top. <laughs> okay, all right. That's all right. That's cool. That's what I wanted to hear. That's what I wanted to hear. Bill, is he going to win 11 more? This year? hmm He's got the capabilities of doing it. Uh, he for sure. He, he's for sure able to, uh, with a little luck on his side. Uh, Don't you manufacture you, luck? You, 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 to a certain extent, yeah. You, you've got to... Mark's got to do his job, uh, mechanicing on the bike, and do everything without any mistakes whatsoever. But then still, we're dealing with two-hour races where you're completely punishing, 100% punishing the machine you're on for two straight hours. And when it comes down to it, it is made of rubber, metal, sure, plastic, runs on fuel, uh, uses and you're oil, doing all you can to break every for, bit of it. Uses oil for lubrication, and even though every time you go to the starting line, the bike is 100%, there still can be things that fail that takes you out from having a perfect season. Oh, a $2 uh, part, that's and, it, not, and that's usually what it is. It and, always and, is a little And that's not just yeah. in Walker's hands, you know. Uh, if, it was, if it's totally in Walker's hands, he's totally capable of doing it. Uh, there's lots of stiff competition out there. It's no walk in the park for him. He's got to go out there and work for it. And there's guys out there that's not going to give him wins. But uh, he's definitely capable of making it happen, that's for sure. Well, I, believe, I believe he will. I, I've, I've, I've done enough, of, you know, where I didn't come in here stone cold. I've done enough research and enough reading and, and things about this young man that, number one, I was impressed before we ever went to dinner. Uh uh, the either either you're pretty good, my friend, or they write awful good about you. One of the two, <laughs> I don't know which it is, but it, I'd, I'd say you're pretty good, and and probably as personable a young racer as there is, guys. Uh, Yamaha is very smart to have you on their team. You're an excellent representative for their company. You're an excellent representative for the sport you're in, and and you're a mentor to young people, and that's what's really important. Uh, so many professionals. Depending on what it is, whether it's ball players, whether it's whatever they are, they forget about all the eyes that are watching them. Yeah, that that are behind the scenes. You know where I'm coming from. I know here. exactly. Where you're coming and from. and, when, and I, when I was in his shoes, uh, first championship, second championship, third championship, fourth championship, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Yeah. Through all those championships, maybe the last season or two, I was starting to get a little bit of it, the importance of it. But it wasn't until I retired and walked away from the sport that I realized the importance that it was to so many people. Yes, yes. And there's so many eyes watching you that you have no idea. And and to the young people, you're way up here. You're, you're where they want to be. They don't know how they're ever going to get there. But you are their role model. And, and so many of your, your professional athletes forget that. And, and they do stupid stuff. And and uh, I find with racers that it's not the case. The you guys, uh, you play a much different game than than a guy that's hitting a baseball or bouncing a basketball or whatever he's doing, uh, because you play where it can bite you, and it can hurt you, and so uh, you do the right thing. And and like the exercise, like the training, like the everything we talked about. And and I think that's so cool for the young people. 
especially the schooling and, and showing them the dedication that you have to have to be a champion. And that's the same thing in life. You got to, you got to want it to get it mm-hmm. and you got to taste it and you got to feel it and you got to smell it. And, and if you want it bad enough, there's nothing that can lay you, er, that can evade you. Isn't that simple? Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. And while we're touching on that, there's another thing that, and I think Bill uh, can definitely relate to it. Um, <sighs> The importance of family in the racing, I think that's one really, really cool aspect about the sport is that it, it when we all started, it was, you know, my dad was a racer and, and my mom was into it and my sister would come to the tracks and, you know, we would spend extended weekends or, or like the Florida Georgia GNCC is a, a week kind of deal and, you know, we were always together and, um, you know, my parents are divorced now, but they both still come to the to the, the races and, and support me and and my mother actually races a, a side by side now, a, a 900 players razor, and she does very well in it. And and it's fun. It's it's such a fun family atmosphere, and it's a good way to to keep the family together, honestly. And it, it's just it, that it, it's so it's it's just fun. It's it's important to me that you know to have same thing. My grandparents, my aunts, uncles, cousins, friends from school, and and, and that I've met around the world that, that follow it and watch it so closely. Like you said, it's. It's just as important to them as it is to me, and I think that's that's really cool about this sport. You know, you're you're like you said, you're pro basketball players and baseball players. I think some of them lose sight of it, and our our sport is such a tight knit group that you you can't lose sight of it because it, you you lose why you started. That's right. That's right. We're going to take one more quick break, guys, and when we come back, we have a special announcement that we're going to talk to my old buddy here about in in just a flash, some new stuff. That's going to come down the pike in the balanced neighborhood. And, uh, you know, this is pretty exciting. You're on event radio, guys. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. On the track or on the street, the number one brand in performance is Hawley. Have you heard about the Ultra Street Avengers, Ultra Double Pumpers, Ultra HP, and Ultra Dominator Carburetors? They're ultra light, ultra cool, and ultra fast. Holly Carbs are the most powerful carbs money can buy with no further modifications. Holly, winning performance for over 100 years. All right, guys, we are back with... uh... My two best, my two new best friends, uh, uh, Mr. Bill Balance, <coughs> excuse me, and Mr. <coughs> Whoa, Walker Fowler. Boy, I'm telling you, what, I, this this allergy <laughs> stuff is a pain in the butt. It's terrible. Bill, old buddy, you've been retired long enough. There's a new side by side down there that has your name on it, and you're going to do this again. What about that? Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Uh... Steve Nessel, one of my contacts with Yamaha that uh, I worked with my whole career through Yamaha, uh, even up until through my racing and then into when I was managing the team. He was always there, and we'd talked a little bit back and forth, and Yamaha had come out, and and uh, they've got a new machine out. It's a side-by-side to compete with the Polaris and the Can-Ams out there, and they have really made one heck of a machine. It's a, it's a 1,000cc motor, three-cylinder motor manual shift transmission uh really nice suspension package on it and uh you know i I don't have to be that 18 year old young gun totally in shape and i can actually get in this thing with some screws in my body and some plates and not be in shape and actually still go fast well don't run it by sonic and he drive in (laughs) restaurant in the middle of the razor or nothing you know i mean this is because this is going to be a walk in the park to you It, it it's but it's going to be completely different buddy it's you don't throw those things around like you did uh, the four wheelers. Have you? I know you've played with it. He scares me. Uh, does he scare you? <laughs> yeah. And, and the and the thing about it, you got your new co pilot here. That he's going to be Walker's going to ride with you in that thing. Yeah, I think this is. Uh, for Do we one, need to get you some depends, buddy, or something? something. Or? I'm going to need. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I might. <laughs> I'm going to have to take some, what's a uh, drama mean or whatever for yeah, the right. people that don't like flying. I'm going to have to do something over there and it's a, uh, it's a trip, but he's a really good driver. Um, he, he was able to bring it down to Florida where we were uh, training him and, and got to play around a few days and I even got to get behind the wheel and I think I scared him too, but he's, he's a good enough driver that I know, uh, I know I'll be good, but 
I, I know I scared him, and it's still it's still a scary, but you really have to trust. Well, I think you could probably both get a Depend sponsorship, you know. I mean, the way you're talking. <laughs> we'll put it right on just, the side. Just, yeah, just send it down there to them, man, and they send it right back to you. Yep. You know. <laughs> when, you're on, when you're on the quad, you know, we go through the, you know, just like Walker is right now when he's out there racing or when he's out there practicing. You're on the quad. You're going through these sections in the course, and, you're missing this tree on the right side by an inch and a half, and you got two inches on this side, and you're running 63.2 miles an hour, and you're on one back wheel. And you don't think anything of it. You're totally in control. Your heart rate don't even get up. You're not even on the edge. And, you know, when I took it down there, you know, he got in with me, and we did a few laps, and he got in behind the wheel to see what he thought about the machine, and I jumped in the passenger seat, and and uh not going anywhere near the speed that we would on our quads but still it's the same thing you're missing a tree here by an inch or two or three and an inch or two over here on this side and and uh when when you're uh when you're driving it you don't uh notice these things you're just focused on what you're doing and what's going on when you Suddenly get in the passenger seat and you're on the other side of the vehicle. Whole new, whole deal deal being the bridesmaid, isn't it? You're looking at the trees. <laughs> you're looking at the trees coming in on your side. Yeah, it's and a hope he sees them. This right? This is the one that's in the control. This guy beside you, and you're just looking like you're going straight for it, and it's just getting ready to plow you, and life is over. Yeah, and there you, you go. You skim by it by an inch, and you think, oh, how'd that even happen? You know how much how much change are you doing to it, or should I even say that? Uh, we're actually not having to do a lot. We're going to do some suspension modifications, change the tires, a uh, little quicker steering box, um, some safety equipment, harnesses, and and stuff like that. Arm but, restraints. But uh, it is a very competitive machine right off the showroom floor. Uh, well, that's to- good. They were, they were sort of lacking there. And and so uh, I think that, that even though uh, uh, they build a great piece of equipment, they couldn't have sent it to a better guy to sort it out for them. I mean, you know, your reputation precedes you. Uh, they want it to be a winner, and that's why they sent it to you. They've got a couple guys on the West Coast. Uh, some racing out there for those is really big, uh, and they've got a couple guys out there racing them, but this will be the first uh, Yamaha somewhat affiliated uh, efforts here on the East Coast. So. It's going to yeah, be okay. It's you can't be, say full blown yet, right? It, That's it, what. <laughs> it's going to be nice. Uh, it's a four wheeled machine, and we're going to the same type of woods that we've raced for years. And a lot of the things we learned about bike setup applies with that. It's just a heavier machine and bigger, but all the things you learned, you know, that coexist there. That, That's and, what I was going to ask. Is is a lot of that going to come into play? Yes. Yeah. It helps a whole ton for setup, and then. To have Walker, this last year's national championship, he's just won two races this year. He's the man to beat. Uh, you know, taking the years of experience that I had and then taking the experience of what he's got, he's still out there running these tracks day in and day out where right. I've been gone for two or three years. And we get to have communication. We're sitting there beside each other. And, uh, man, that's just going to be killer to be able to ride through the woods. And yeah, if you can hear through the screaming, I guess it would be, you know, <laughs> help, you know. But no. but there's going to be obviously lines that I pick up on, and I'm focused on the track, but there's going to be, with his experience that he's able to put right in there beside me in the seat, he's going to say, remember this line, or go left up here, or don't forget this spot. You know, it's just going to, I think it's going to be so helpful when we get out there on the track to be First able. race, when is it? About two and a half weeks from now, three weeks. Yeah. And where is it? South Carolina. So you're, you're keyed up, ready to go. We're getting close. I'm looking forward to it. It's now, ball. on this visit, Walker, with you here, and you're, you're mainly working on your four-wheeler, I understand, but are you guys sort of tweaking the other thing at the same visit? I saw him ripping around in it today and, and uh, picking up on a few things. I didn't get a chance to get in it, but uh, he was playing in it. I know he's excited. It's just it's a new thing, you know. It's a new toy, and whenever we have new toys, it's it's always well, exciting. Toys are cool. Toys are so cool. Yeah, they're neat. I actually um, I bought a little Yamaha Rhino seven hundred, and they're not racing machines by any means. It's, it, it was more for uh, the girlfriend and I to go mud bogging in Florida and enjoy some time together. But of course, a racer can't leave anything alone. So I got some um, upgraded suspension components and suspension seats and harnesses and. Uh, 
you know, wheels and tires and all the fixes. The that, necessities of life. Yeah, what I think are necessities. But there you go. Probably were unnecessary. Yeah, but, stock, nothing is nothing. You know, you yeah, don't want anything no. stock, right? No, no. Rebuilt the top end. <laughs> you even doctored in. up your chicken, you know, in dinner. <laughs> exactly, you didn't want it yeah. stock the way it came. You had to doctor it up. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, it, it'll be exciting. Will this, will this race be televised, guys? Yeah, all the GNCCs are televised. Okay, what are they? Are they where they MAP TV or what's what are they on? You know, they're actually televised live on racertv.com, dot R A C E R T V dot com. Okay, good deal. So we'll be able to come down and watch you racertv.com, dot com, guys. And you make sure that uh, a couple of weeks of race from the Carolinas, you need to to tune on to that and and watch my two buddies here. They're gonna walk the walk they've already spent the night talking the talk here so they're going to walk the walk for you and show you that they know what they're doing and uh wind up the first one across the finish line see that's what's important it would be really cool for sure i think uh he's definitely got the driving experience and the ability to do it and i'm just going to hold on for dear life and even even though he let the old fat guy beat him home from dinner (laughs) you know i mean give me a break we definitely brought our b game yeah okay yeah i mean you know didn't bring the a game we brought the b game okay well that's all right we can understand gentlemen i can't tell you how important and how much fun this has been to have you on event radio it has been our pleasure our honor for you to take the time to sit down and spend a few minutes with us uh, we get to introduce you to a bunch of folks that uh, we hope we've gotten you some more fans because you sure will make them happy. There's no doubt about it. Any sponsors we need to say something about before we get done? Uh, I definitely have to say thank you to the whole uh, NFAB, Maxis, and Per Yamaha team and uh, all our affiliated sponsors, Maxis Tires, Hyper Wheels, Tire Balls, Moto Experts, Lone Star Racing. There's a whole list of guys that uh, make it possible for us to get to the races every weekend and um, you can check our social media. You can search, search uh, Walker Fowler on Facebook and uh, Walker underscore Fowler on Instagram. And uh, also we have a, a good little series going on on YouTube right now. It's uh, Walker Fowler, The Road to Repeat. And uh, you can just keep up with everything there and uh, be able to see our sponsors and, and basically daily lifestyle race recaps a whole bit. There you go, guys. Watching me just chicken at the restaurant. <laughs> you know, no, whatever. Bill, what about you, buddy? Any sponsors working other than Yamaha right now? Uh, there's some people helping out that's going to be going into the buggy. Uh, Hess Motorsports is doing some stuff for us, and uh, Hauser, they're building some roll cages and some protective stuff. Uh, you know, Yamaha's supplying machines and stuff like that. Maxis Tires is going to be helping out with it some. Um, so it's just getting started. It's going to be a fun thing, experimental thing for me and for Yamaha. Uh, first race you, you go hoping to win but i'm not going with any expectations the first time out it's to see what it's all about i've never competed in one of these machines before i'm going down there with one thing and that's to go out and have fun and enjoy it and uh see how it all crumbles down at the end and where we finish and take it from there uh and i'm sure each time we go back it's going to be getting you know it'll get a little more serious each time i i can't keep that from happening that's just part of it that's being a racer my friend that's being a racer guys thank you so much for taking your time to be on event radio this has been a wonderful show for me to get to do Uh, i've enjoyed it even though i've probably coughed through some of it but i hadn't hadn't meant to but it's been a great night to be able to both meet you guys bill i've already known but but walker to get to meet you and the mechanic and, and all everybody that we got to meet at dinner, uh, it, this has been a fun thing. Thank you so much for your time and your expertise and your entertainment that you give everybody every week across this country. But mainly the, the role model that you do for the young people, teaching them to use the safety stuff when they get on the bikes, do it the way that they're designed to be done, and they're a blast. And, and take care of yourself because we want you to be on them for a long time like these guys are cool deal yep thank you for having us on here and thank you to all the listeners and everyone that's uh keeping track of everything we really do appreciate it uh without the fans the sport can't grow and and we don't have a sport so everyone that that uh, you know pays attention and listens thank you guys so much guys as always we never conclude a show without thanking the people that are most important in our world next to you the listeners our sponsors the great guys at holly performance uh, as many lines as they have, buddy, if you don't find a part for your hot rod from Holly, you don't have a hot rod. The guys at Quick Fuel Technologies, the absolute number one best carburetor builders in the free world, there is no better than the guys at Quick Fuel. 
the people at Beach Bend Raceway, Beach Bend Splash Lagoon, Beach Bend Amusement Park, the most fun place you can have this summer. Any day you want to go, you can get wet wild and have a great time at Beach Bend. And the 26 multi-day events that we will be covering at Event Radio out there, from Hot Rod Reunion to the Tri-Fives to the Good Guys to, oh, man, you name it, Import Alliance all the way down. Uh, Harley Drags, you name it, we're going to be there. But uh, we certainly enjoy you joining us for any of those. Last but not least, our buddies, Mr. Jimmy B. at GearheadGazette.com. You can go on there and learn who, what, when, and where of every cool event that's going on all across this nation. Make sure and check out GearheadGazette.com. There again, a special thank you to our guest tonight, Mr. Walker Fowler, Mr. Bill Balance, the absolute two best ATV riders in the free world, and you met them right here on Event Radio. As I always say, guys, if you've enjoyed what you've heard, please tell a friend. If you didn't, you keep that to yourself. Guys, we will talk again. You've been listening to Event Radio. Covering local drag racing, stock car racing, motorcycles, go-karts. If it's got wheels and you can race it, you heard about it here. Event Radio is Motorsports Radio on steroids. Join us next time with your hosts, Spivy Williams and Terrible Tea Guy.